What's up guys, Bloodshed here. I just thought I would make a quick video and say hi. It's been a while since I've made just a custom video. Um, I actually didn't even comb my beard or anything. I just got done filming the new podcast, which we'll get into very soon here. But um, yeah, so hi guys. Um, I thought I would just say what's up. I hope you're doing okay during the quarantine. I hope you guys are staying safe, your family's safe. Um, yeah, I hope things get better for you if you've suffered any job loss or financial loss or anything like that. Um, I made the decision really early on to stream every day during quarantine um, <clears throat> just to do my part and help out and whatever I can um, for Twitch. So I've been doing 9 to 7 Monday through Friday and then like 9 to 2.30 on the weekends. Um, Pacific Standard Time on the West Coast here. I'm on, I'm on Blizzard Time also, so on the West Coast. So yeah, the podcast is back. I got myself a new co-host, so it's going to be me and Rekka. She's one of my Twitch mods. She does incredible work for the stream, and she's hilarious, and she's the, a meme master. So I'm going to post the podcast after this intro right here. So it's just going to post after that. But typically, you're going to be able to find it on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Music, and stuff like that. Typically, it won't be um, on YouTube, I don't think. This is full audio only. We might go to video one day in the future, but I'm not sure, right? My season's been going good. I've been playing hardcore. I hope your season's been going well as well. I have seven players on the leaderboard just... You know, just hanging out. We got like a Seder and I've been pushing on Frenzy Bar, but pretty much all off meta. I have Lazy Shotgun, Frenzy Barb, uh, Multi Shot Demon Hunter. Um, we did like a Corpse Lance Necro and then like a Death Nova Necro. Well, I guess Mundanugu and my Monk are not off meta. So I have a Mundanugu and then I have a Tempest Rush Paj Monk also. So we've just been pushing on hardcore. It's been fun and um, staying busy. So some characters have died. Some characters have lived. Um, but overall, my season's been great. And I'm hoping we get the PTR in a few weeks here. I know it sounds soon, but maybe like the first week of uh, May? Possibly? April, May, June. So it should be like early May we get the PTR. And then the season should be out in June if there's no slowdown. Um, the CEO of Activision Blizzard actually said that they haven't suffered any slowdown as of yet. So if business is usual, we should get the season in June, hopefully. I don't know. Um, but yeah, man, check out the podcast. Let me know what you think. I do want to take some time um, to thank patrons. I'm about to pokey wrap this. Let me see. I really we got so many patrons in April and a lot of you guys have stayed supporting it really helps me out and i really appreciate it and we also got new merch i'll put links to that in the description as well so alex mark k hunt lance thank you guys man i really appreciate the support alex m jonas thomas a big blood brother support from blaine nicholas nicholas p travis Conan, Conan's from the stream. I don't know you, Conan. And a big dono um, support from Josh as well. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad you like the content. Um, I have a full library of builds on my Patreon page. It's free for everybody. You just, you can look at and click on all the builds without supporting. I just use it as like a website until I get a square space. But that's the least of my worries these days as I've been streaming seven days a week. Um, Trying to entertain people and do what I do best, I suppose. And um, yeah, and the podcast. So now we're going to do the full time streaming and we're going to add the podcast on top of it. Um, and like I said, if you guys want to see it every week, I'll post it on YouTube. But it's mostly just like an audio. Just I want to be a really good podcaster and I want to master the art of podcasting if possible, at least to the best of my ability. And with the new co-host, um, you know, we want to get our synergy and our flow together. That way we can put on the best show for you guys. But I just wanted to say hi and I'm here and you can always talk to me. I'm live. I should be live right now. I'm already late today. So this is the Boba Boba Bloodshed and I'm out of here. Peace. Welcome to a new episode of the Blood Heart Podcast. We're back better than ever before, stronger. And I have a new, a brand, brand new co-host with me. 
She's one of my most trusted moderators and one of my closest friends, uh, Rekka. So Rekka, if you want to introduce yourself. Hello. Um, I, a, I don't know what to say. Say um, um, like what your favorite games are, maybe. Oh, okay. Um, well, Diablo, obviously. World of Warcraft ranks slightly above Diablo, I suppose. But yeah. that's only because the amount of time that I played and even though my... I'm not playing currently, it's yeah. still way up there. <laughs> <laughs> my top two games as well, so that works. Yeah, so other games. I don't really play many other games, I suppose. Overwatch a little bit, but other than that, I spend most of my time sitting in chat making memes, trolling mm. people. That's a good <laughs> skill, honestly. Yeah. In 2020, that's a top tier skill, I'd say. Yeah, that's all I tend to do, really. I don't really do much else apart from TV, movies, I get annoyed by my cat all the time. Um, other than that, I'm just over here across the sea, living my best life in a living land your of best lots life. of green. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So we're going to still do uh, news, but we're going to have the same format as before, where it's going to be like Diablo 3, and then we're going to maybe do some Blizzard news, typically, and then we'll branch off into like industry news, um, depending on you know what's popping for the week or whatever. And it'll still be like a weekly podcast, as long as we can both get linked up and uh, film it. It should be weekly. We want to keep it yeah. the same day for everybody. I'm not sure exactly what day. But um, it'll be consistent. We're, we're, we're gonna, it's back and it's here to stay, basically, right? Yeah, for definite. Like consistency is key. As long as we're both around, which we will be, because <laughs> why wouldn't we be? That'd be, right. you know. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> What's the first topic today? Actually, What's the first so, on the list? Your last podcast, you were introducing Rod Ferguson. He was just. Mm announcing that he was joining blizzard to work on diablo and he's just celebrated his first month actually working there on april 4th dang it's been a month already yeah yeah and obviously he got what eight days of actual working in the office before obviously everyone was sent home to work temporarily from home um but he's been really active on social media like a hell of a lot like he's posting quite a lot of things he's playing the game um he's playing other things too but so far i think he seems really nice yeah yeah i'm looking through some of the tweets he's posting his clears on twitter i missed all this stuff <laughs> like yeah gr100 100 yeah, 100. yeah. yeah. <laughs> i mean if, if he's never awesome. played that's pretty good right if he's never played before exactly that was like, I was like wow he's come he's joined you know he had lots to say about you know he really likes the staff that the Diablo team have but he was also saying after meeting them he's enjoying the game because of you know the work and love that they put into it as well which is really cool to see yeah when he first took over I, I was looking through the comments and and um, you know like because he has like a Gears of War fan base right and mm -hmm. uh, people are asking him in the comments, like, I'm interested in Diablo now that you're moving to Diablo. What should I start with? And he was telling everybody Diablo 3, which I thought was really cool. Kind of. Yeah. He's like that's, one of us yeah, are trying to be anyway. Yeah. That's really cool. Gears of War has such a big following as well. And he was a big part of that. And, you know, it's nice to see that he gained their, you know, respect and they like him enough to think about following him to another game as well because it's a totally different game yeah yeah i mean like not even close yeah gears of war yeah way like, way way apart the camera the the genre <laughs> i mean <laughs> yeah, i guess we're killing so demonic kind of they're aliens but they're kind of demon-y i don't know maybe yeah it's quite a, <laughs> yeah it's I, quite an aggressive game, you know. I played a little bit back when the first one came out. The chainsaw, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was quite, you know, in the single player story part of Gears of War, it was quite scary. I get scared at games really easily. And really? I don't like being chased. So <laughs> it wasn't the greatest game for me to play, but I actually really enjoyed it. So it's nice that, you know, him come in and people wanted to now come to Diablo I think that's a really amazing thing it shows what kind of person he is and what we've gained by him joining here yeah that's true he does have a lot to offer and like a whole different experience from a different genre so that's cool 
Yeah. Plus, he's been playing Animal Crossing, so really, it's not all. Yeah, he's um. All <laughs> he's about joined us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right. He's, yeah, he's in the turnip market, and he was saying how he had to check his turnips, and you know, so it's kind of funny to see that. Not only is he all about demons and aliens and shooting and killing, but he's got a cutesy side with Animal Crossing. Right, right. I, I invested like 600k myself this week, so I'm I'm looking to flip them. <laughs> yeah. So let us know if you got if 300 or more price, I'll take it. Yeah, we need those big numbers, definitely. I was really bad this week. I've worked them out. We're awful. Like, uh -oh. we can maybe double our profit, you know. We can double what we put in, but we want those big numbers, please, oh, no. somebody. What about Nev? What about Nevalistus? Yeah, so we've How got sad. him joining and her leaving. It's I know. really sad. I know. If you don't know, Nevelistus uh, left Blizzard. She's no longer our community manager. She went by many names, Dainty and Brandy. <laughs> she still goes by Brandy, I guess. <laughs> yeah, still goes by Brandy. <laughs> That's still her name, actually. Um, it's super sad. As soon as I was a creator, as soon as I became a streamer, YouTuber, and before I had any kind of like following, like she was always really nice and reached out from the beginning. And... Um, She's like the to me. She's like the the whole face and the the figurehead of Diablo. Like we haven't had a constant besides her since Reaper of Souls came out. Mm -hmm. She's like the godmother in a way, without yeah. her being an old person. But she's like that fairy godmother that puts you know everyone at ease when she was posting on the forums and you know you would wait for her posts and her coming into chat and things. I know she's been in since, but you know it's really. Sad, but at the same time it's nice because she's following what she has a real passion for yeah yeah she's going to uh wizards of the coast what which one is it magic 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 um, no she's come to D, D, hasn't she oh it's, oh, it's, it's D, D wizards of the coast yeah right? wizards uh, yeah wizards uh, okay yeah chicago or something i'm not totally sure where they uh, are she's still gonna be in the community staying, yeah they were having sunshine for once or something and she was having a lot of rain which was rare for her and um but she's still going to be part of your community is she's already yeah here. yeah so totally it's not all sad <laughs> but it is sad that she's left because she was that kind of one person that you know knew i don't know she just had a way the way she you know made her post she put a lot of work into it and she was really friendly with everyone. She was active on Reddit and, you know, Twitter and things. So she will be missed, like, big time. Yeah, I think the for me the biggest is, um, you know, because she was the constant. Like, you see, like we were saying, because, like, in the original game, all the developers are gone, basically. And then in Reaper of Souls, like, Wyatt Chang, John Yang, Josh Mascara, like, they're all gone. So we haven't had, like, a consistent personality besides her since... Yeah. Reaper of Souls was like six years ago. So, yeah, but she's wow. she's obviously amazing, but she's without her, there's just like, it feels like there's no consistent. I guess I would be like me or Riker or somebody, It'd be the only consistent faces at this point now. Sadly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sadly. And the team itself, you know, she wasn't, she was the CM and stuff, but the actual team working on Diablo, that's a lot smaller. Some of them mm -hmm. moved to WoW even. I know that they brought Mythic Plus in, and I think those were the Diablo guys that worked on that. So they switched over to there. And, but I think they do a good job for having such a small team. Yeah. Yeah, there's like two developers, and they've been crushing it. We've been getting like so much content in the last year and a half since they took over. Been yeah. Great. It's new been great. Pets and, you know, the new seasons have been good, except the last one. But <laughs> The pandemonium, the pandemonium <laughs> yeah. I thought was fun, but um, yeah, and then it wasn't fun because it's just too strong. It was just like when you using the buff to manipulate everything. Yeah, but, it felt amazing at first, but then not so much. But um, yeah, I'm sad that she's gone though. But, you know, I hope she enjoys what she is going to be doing because I know she already has a big passion in that. Yeah. 
yeah. I, I guess her happiness is more important. Yeah, that's the thing. It's I'm... like you have such a passion for Diablo. It'd be weird if, like, for me, it'd be weird if you one day was like, okay, I'm leaving and I'm going to go and main Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be, like, you know, the same kind of thing. It'd be like, okay. <laughs> right, I mean, just, like, out of nowhere, yeah. basically. But it makes yeah, sense for her. Least, yeah, she had a background of, like, you know, she was already doing things like that. She had a big interest already. Yeah. Yeah, when I had talked to her many times, so she'd always tell me she's into, like, voice acting and stuff like that as well. So maybe mm-hmm. with, like, D&D, she gets to take a little bit of that. And <laughs> Yeah, she's very creative as well. Like, mm-hmm. I was looking at her wedding outfit and things, which is sad because they had to cancel their wedding for now. But um she's very creative like everything she kind of posts she's just i don't know this really nice creative kind of soul kind of things so D pretty much suits her to a t i think yeah goodbye nev you'll be missed but you're not totally Bye. gone i'll and see hello, you in d4 we'll see you soon <laughs> yeah i'll see you soon until next time so we got a, a buff a month into the season. That's pretty cool. Yes. Well, we know how it takes them a while to upload things. So Oof, people yeah. were saying, why are we not getting something? And wow, is getting things. But it's obviously because they have to take time to be able to put it on the servers. But the double goblins, I love it. Yeah, like uh, a lot of games were getting stuff. Like Dead by Daylight got double blood shards. They have blood shards too. It's Mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> and um wow got the xp buff right the 100 percent and they've buff. also got a 100 percent rep buff as well now really yeah so they were ending mm-hmm. the xp buff well we'll go to that later actually we'll go to the goblins mm-hmm. first and not deviate i tend to do this a lot I deviate yeah me too my past. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah double goblins I love it. I love goblin farming. It's nice to have it in the rifts, especially because it gets a bit boring. It's just giving that something a little more when you see a goblin. It's like, well, there's two double jelly gobs is amazing. Yeah, the double blue gob, the jellies, it's really hard to go back to one. That's what happened in the first season. That was the seasonal theme for the first one. And um, Mm. it was the seasonal theme the first time we had a seasonal theme. And uh, yeah, it was really hard to go back to one the following season. So it's good to have it back. So we not only have the double goblin, we have the... um, what is the buff called? With the the cube buff, but you can put any cube in any slot. That's oh, good. what is it called? Yeah, it has a weird name. But <laughs> do we play this game? I, I know, can't dude. actually remember its name. <laughs> yeah, we call it the Kanai Cube Buff, I guess. Yeah, the <laughs> cube works. buff. <laughs> yeah, the cube buff. It has a it has a weird name. I'll figure it. Out. I'll remember what it is. Or definitely tweet at me and tell me how silly I am. I'm like looking Cuba-rama? it up right now. <laughs> the Cuba Rama, yeah, I think that's actually yeah, it. The Cuba yeah, you Rama. got it. That yeah. yeah, I think that's what it's. You landed it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually can't remember what it is called. All I keep thinking is pandemonium. That is going to be stuck in my mind for the rest of eternity. I think. Yeah, I I, I don't mind that they um, swing and miss. You know, it's only one season, and then we mm-hmm. can move on. You know, but it just feels. We had this crazy one last season. Everyone was crazy overpowered. Yeah. And I didn't want to stay that way, but also it feels a little underwhelming this season. It's more like we've got a second rogue, but we can use weapons instead, kind of. Yeah, it's a little bit weaker than the Ring of Royal Grandeur bonus, technically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you gain a little bit less power, but... Uh... I think it's one of those themes that could stay permanently if they rebalance Necromancer, but that's a whole podcast. <laughs> it's a different podcast. That was a permanent. Like, yeah. it just opens up so many more kind of things that you can do. And I think the game kind of needs that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, like more options and like uh, freedom. Like when they added the lawn gem, we were able to build however we wanted, basically. Yeah. And then the cube allows us to kind of also continue to build however we want without any restrictions. It's, it's really good. It's a really good theme. It's just uh, the way Necromancer was designed, you know, gets as just general buffs across the board. So you just you end up using all weapons. It's not as interesting because you're just slotting those, you know. 
Yeah, it's like people always ask you, why did they bring in the Lod gem and totally break and, you know, they made the lawn set totally pointless because of the gem. I don't know why they did that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit strange to, you know, totally devalue something within a game. But at the same time, it's an amazing change. And, you know, there's still people saying they don't like the gem. And I think it's it's a good gem that they added. I, it's a lot nicer. It gives you more choices than having to keep the set or, you know, the two. And it just opens up things. I like the Lod ring, um, the Lod gem. Yeah, ring. yeah. It's great. <laughs> Amazing. The, they can always buff the ring set as well later on. Yeah, exactly. There's, you know, there's options there. They haven't removed them completely. It is a bit annoying when you get that green ring and you think it might be something good and then it's one of them. That's a little <laughs> annoying right now. But... I have that issue with uh, compass roses looking just like Zuni rings. I get triggered all season, early season. <laughs> yes, Zuni rings. Stop I always it. get excited. And then it's like, ready, Zuni. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here, Zuni. We don't like you. <laughs> so we've had Rod Ferguson join in, Neverless is leaving, which left the CM positions. Like, mm. Mm. Yes. Who's so our new CM? <laughs> we don't know who they are yet. I Where are you? <laughs> but you to... I'm not sure on that. But yeah. we have borrowed Sidra. I'm guessing that's how he pronounces it. Oh, Sidra, yeah. Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, so he's been at Blizzard since 2008. I looked him up, had a little look around. Oh, background check. Post, yeah, background check. Mm -hmm. um, because I noticed a post after he had posted saying, um, thank you for giving us some of your time. We know you're already busy and things like that. So that led me to believe, yes, he is, in fact, just here temporarily helping us out. Nice. Yeah, so sidra has been posting on our forums um we just randomly started posting stuff like we're gonna fix account security for you and things like that and we as a community we're like wait who is this person <laughs> are you the new yeah, cm introduce yourself very curious beings yeah. over here yeah. Yeah. Really? And so it's very weird because it says zero posts i like to troll people with that you know <laughs> why are you lying no one's posting it says they have zero posts <laughs> yeah right so if he was the CM, we were just kind of like, uh, it was a little jarring because he didn't see, like introduce himself, but he's just like the interim. So he gets a, he gets a free pass from the Diablo community, I guess. Yeah. He's been around a long time too. Yeah. So, you know, he can be trusted with our lovely forums and I don't know, <laughs> he's a nice guy. Maybe he'll stick around. Maybe he'll True. grow to love the community and want to stay. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. I think it's good to get a CM. It doesn't have to be as fast as possible, but by next season, that way we have, uh, you know, someone to communicate to. They're like the middle person between us and the developers. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, exactly. Have it that would connection. be nice. Right. A fixed set. I, th I think there are three they're hiring, or they're hiring multiples. Some might be for Diablo 4. I don't know. It doesn't really kind of say on the website who what game they're going to go to kind of some yeah. do some but it's either for us or for a combination of the two games maybe i know they were hiring for immortal cms and uh, that's the one that i saw that said like a uh, blizzard mobile community manager or something or mentioned some kind of mobile situation that was yeah. the post i saw so i don't know that's it might be it, maybe it could be for all of it game. yeah yeah because what, what was the other one that you did um the turn-based kind of thing. I can't remember what its name is. Was it Hearthstone something? Mm, the turn-based? What do you mean? Yeah, they did a new thing. You can get a trial of it if you had the um, virtual ticket. It was way back at BlizzCon. I think it was kind of a mo another mobile game. I can't oh, remember. you mean the oh, like the it was like a camera. Right? Like it was like um, the League of Legends. A battle. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda, yeah. yeah I know it what you're was a bit about. strange. I never even really looked into it. I was just like, okay, that seems cool, but that's not my kind of thing very much. So I didn't really look into it. Yeah. I played a little bit of that type of genre and um, it was, I was addicted for like a few weeks and then I kind of got out of it. <laughs> yeah. That tends to happen to me. Pick up something new, get really hooked on it. And then I'm like, I don't really like this. <laughs> <laughs> you're like and it was fun 
goodbye. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. I experienced it. That's the end. <laughs> That's the main thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, so that was popular for a minute, and then so Blizzard made their Hearthstone version of that, and mm -hmm. um, an auto battler is the genre that they're called. And what was um, that? auto battler. Yeah, it's a weird name, but it's kind of fun. You set up your little army, and then you know, go to battle. <laughs> yeah, you played the other one. What was it? The League, the League of Legends one. Yeah. Yeah, the League of Legends one. That yeah. that looked quite fun. I think uh, it's on mobile too now. So. Oh, yeah. that's pretty cool. Everyone Ooh. seems to be going mobile. I'm for it. You know, I have a phone. I feel like <laughs> most people do should you? have. Yeah, do you? Do I? <laughs> do no, you? I'm like I have an old Nokia. No, uh, but I'm I'm for mobile gaming. You never know when you get stuck somewhere. You know. And that's the only thing you have with you. Yeah. You're not going to just sit there and not do anything. You're going to probably go and download a game of some sort. So I think if there's games out there that you already enjoy and they have a mobile version, why wouldn't you pick it up? You know, yeah. even just to look at it, check it out. I know it gets hate, you know, Immortal gets hate. But at the same time, it could be really good. It's all misdirected, but yeah, like if they had announced Diablo 4 and then Immortal the next year, it yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't have been. Because yeah, who cares? You already just... have your game, you know, like it wouldn't be. It would be like, it's like an extra team, an extra entity it has nothing to do with Diablo 4. Yeah, I think they should have done it the other way around, maybe. But then again, you know, they took a lot of hate for it. It was quite <laughs> funny at the time, but <laughs> I think people are warm into the idea now, maybe. Yeah, because we got fed, you know, we got our we got our big game. We know that they're not yeah. abandoning in the player base. I think that was the biggest thing, you know. Yeah, what do you mean you're going mobile? Where's our next, you know, anything to do with this? You know, people have wanted the Druid added to Diablo 3. Yeah. Um, but we're getting that in Diablo 4, which is good. So you're I'm like, excited. you're like, mommy, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, take me to Disneyland for three, four yes. years, three, four years <laughs> in a row. And then they come, they open the door, they say, hey, kids. I'm taking the neighbor to Disneyland. <laughs> That's basically what yeah. happened. And they're that like, oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> Take me out of this That's family. In <laughs> <laughs> so now that we're going to Disneyland, it doesn't really matter what other projects they do. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, yeah. I guess nobody's it, going right now. So that's sad. Even if they're saying, no, I'd never touch it, you can guarantee they're going to. You know, curiosity gets the better of everyone. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to anything that they bring in. You know, I played it. I played it two years in a row. The two BlizzCons in a row. Um, I streamed it, played it many. I would say like a couple hours at least um, each year. Um, and uh, it's the best mobile game I ever played. And I'm somebody who doesn't like mobile games that much. So I was like, damn, this is good. Like, I almost rather play this than, like, the Switch version uh, of Diablo 3, just because it's, um, it's in your pocket, and it's, like, really quick to pull out, do a little bit, and then just put it away. Like, you know, I think they did a good job designing it. See, and I have Diablo on the Switch, but I haven't actually played it yet. I, I it like, says a lot, of, I think. I don't I know. Like, I have the Diablo Switch um, also, or, the, like, the whole, like, the actual Switch version. I like the controller, but using the Joy-Con, like, the handheld version is really hard. So like for me for some reason already oh, really? yeah like they've just announced that they're bringing controller support to shadowlands as well oh they announced it or was it data mind uh, no they announced it um oh. earlier mm -hmm. so yeah i can't get the whole it's not that i don't like the joy cons or anything on the switch i do but for some games it's just not for me i think i need more control i feel anyway yeah you know, you've got you now, think wow is bringing <laughs> controllers and i'm like okay do you think it's like a segue to console world of warcraft yes okay. i think they're gonna head that way um i don't know they're, they're claiming it's for accessibility you know want to use the xbox accessible controller or whatever it's called i don't have an xbox i don't play console generally yeah. but i don't know i'm yeah, it seems nice, but they've always said that WoW was not made to be played on anything other than a keyboard and mouse. Yeah. So it's a bit strange all of a sudden, you know, Xbox and, you know, things are making it so you can use keyboards 
and now while we're making it so you can use a controller it's kind of are we heading into a console launch for wow then i i i think it looks like it and um yeah i mean the new xbox looks like a tower like a pc tower so yeah exactly and it you know that's a one way to build up your player base again you know wow's been declining since like wrath of the lich king i believe so right or it might have leveled off at some point but they peaked at wrath anyway yeah, I think the MDIs and things brought more people to the game as soon as they took it to big competition. Like they already already had arena competition, but I think something other than arena and they took it into the MDIs that brought a lot more kind of buzz around it. So now all people want to really do is do Mythic Plus. A lot of people only do Mythic Plus and things. So. Yeah. I don't know, open it up to console, would I want to do a Mythic Plus with uh, someone that was healing using a controller? <laughs> no, <laughs> I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't know how they would do it. It would feel impossible to me. I don't know. Maybe there's some very talented people out there. I I play a lot of console. I've, so I, all day I play on my PC, mouse and keyboard, and then after my stream I usually go play with my family. Um, we play on Xbox. And uh, it's I think it would be fine, but it, you can't. You definitely can't do like mouse over macros and like that crazy stuff that you can do with a mouse and keyboard. Um, I think it would be. I think it would be great. And then maybe you can select who you group with too. That way, if you don't mind grouping with everyone, you have that option. I know Call of Duty has an option where you don't have to group with console players if you don't want to for whatever reason. So there might be like a variety there for people that want. Maybe you don't want to wait. 30 minutes as DPS in queue, you know, and then you open it up to console and then you can play with everybody and maybe your queue is like 10 minutes or something. Um, yeah. As far as controllers go, yeah. I um, played Final Fantasy 11 and 14 with the controller and it's really easy because you have the shoulder buttons and then it opens up different like, uh, like uh, hot bars. So it's really easy to shift between abilities, like almost faster in a way. About the same speed, if not faster, because it's just like your hands are already on the buttons. It's really easy to kind of flip through the hotkeys. But yeah, yeah, the, the mouse over, the being able to select things with the mouse and all that is that would be tough at first. Can you imagine even trying to type out a macro with a controller? Did <laughs> <laughs> you're sliding over? Yeah. <laughs> to them because it would take them longer to do anything if they wanted to use a controller but yeah it's not for me i'm not a controller kind of person yeah. not for a lot of i don't begrudge people enjoying console and things it's just not for me anymore i enjoy the switch but it's you know a bit different totally yeah. different Boxing. yeah i think it's cool that we both have two ends of the spectrum for sure yeah because yeah. i haven't played console since i don't know way way um, Back in Need for Speed, one of the very first Need for Speeds. I played Gears of War, the very first one on Xbox 3. Yeah, you got scared and then you never came back. <laughs> I've been giving it up and I'd already gone to PC. I've been playing PC since Medal of Honor, Allied Assault and things. So I'd already taken the Switch and obviously playing WoW. The console was pushed way out. I didn't... I didn't want to keep spending money on the two of them because obviously PC is expensive to upgrade and buying games for both systems. I was just like, I don't have time to do both either. I was working a lot. So console was like shoved out and no. I'm getting kind of back into little console things, but not really. So it's much. more like so just casual. Nice yeah. Who does? Yeah. Like you play console with your family. So it's kind of nice for me as well to have the other side of it because I know nothing really about console. Yes, the games, not anything else. <laughs> Everyone's like, how do you aim? Because we've been playing Overwatch. How do you aim? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I grew up playing Goldeneye, Perfect Dark, Halo. Like this is just normal to play on a controller also for me. Like both. Lost. I'd be like, what do I do? <laughs> Yeah, like a like moving by turning, like it's a like a steering wheel, like like a grandma with a controller, You're like eh. turning <laughs> yeah, left and right. My arms, yeah, like... moving your arms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like you're driving a car. 
Hey, it's okay. That's me. That is me. I booted it up to play a little bit of Need for Speed over Christmas, and I was doing that. And I, I'm not even ashamed to say it. I was trying to physically move myself to move the car. There you go. So yeah, <laughs> I'm not that great at console, but it's still fun now and again. Nice. So we had a uh, Shadowlands Alpha, which I didn't get into. Got. <laughs> Shadowlands um, Alpha. Did you did you get in on any of your accounts or anything? I didn't. No, I'm pretty sad. Um, I cancelled badly. I cancelled one of my well, my veteran account cancelled its sub for a little while, mm-hmm. and I'm wondering did that affect me getting Alpha? Because we know people like people who spend money. Yeah. Um, veteran account is my very first account that I've you know, made. So it's been there for all these years. And normally I do get alpha. I get beta. I don't think there's been one that I haven't got yet. So I'm a little bit bummed that I'm, you know, I don't have one yet. But are they still in the friends and family phase, maybe? Maybe. I'm not sure exactly. What you say a veteran account, how like how old is your account? So my account's from well, I it's from the very first, from Vanilla, like six months into Vanilla. Oh, wow. And then okay. I merged it into the Battle.net. So it's my very original account. So that's my EU one. So that's the my main, main account. Obviously, I play NA now as well, but that was my very, very first account. So it's got to be, what, 14 years old or so, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I recovered um, my Vanilla account also, and I merged it to my main account. So I have like the two, like WoW 1 and WoW 2 on Battle.net. Yeah. So I also have a veteran account with, um, I had like PvP titles and rating and all that stuff. I still pay for my sub though, so I'm not sure. You might be luckier than me. I've resubbed since, but I cancelled it um, last year for a little while because I just wasn't interested at all. And then I started playing on the NA account again. And I was like, okay... I'm just going to stop it for a little while because nothing's going on with it and I wish I hadn't done. But hey, I might still get it, hopefully. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, uh, you, yeah, I mean, what are you going to... You can't just stay on a game just to maybe get alpha, you know? Like, that's... Yeah, so you're exactly. not having fun, you're not, you're not having fun. Plus, oh. I have so many accounts and it's like I pay for most of them with gold, but if I'm not farming gold, I'm not you know replenishing yeah yeah i'm not getting it back so it came to where you know i just didn't want to sit there farming gold and pay for them all and it just got it gets a bit overwhelming but that's my own fault because i like to do too much i noticed that when i've been playing retail and a little bit of classic uh there's like a lot going on and then with add-ons there's a lot of stuff and then when you play classic it's just like world of warcraft so it's kind of like strips away a lot of the other stuff i've been having a lot of fun with classic also it can get overwhelming a lot you know i'm hoping shadowlands is gonna it looks like it's gonna simplify a lot of things i'm sure there's still gonna be wild quests or dailies but Mm -hmm. one to 120 it doesn't take that long but it's still a big big number i'm really looking forward to one to 60 if i want to level something new because it doesn't seem as bad, you know. I'm is it because the number the number is smaller, or just because yeah, the number's smaller, so and it, it feels, feels closer. A bit better. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a more reasonable number to get to for me, anyway. Because one twenty, that's a lot, you know. Yeah. And then sixty doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> okay. Um, with World of Warcraft, I don't mind. I think because I'm maybe trained that way. But with like games like Diablo, when they're going from right now, the current max is 40 in Diablo and Diablo four. And uh, yeah, that's really triggering because I guess I'm used to like 99 or even 70, I guess now. Yeah. So if I'm going to 40, I'm like, wait a minute. But in yeah, World of Warcraft, does it doesn't seem- bother me. I don't know why. See, it seems weird for me. D4 is going to be 40. Yeah. But it doesn't seem weird that. Now WoW's going to be 60. I don't know. Maybe because we started there. I think so. Okay? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Normally, I like a big number. It makes you feel more powerful. But after leveling so many characters and it being, you know, 100, 110, 120, 
it's kind of like, okay, I'm fed up with this 120 number now. I want to cut back and have a smaller number so I don't feel like I'm wasting a ridiculous amount of time of my life leveling characters. <laughs> yeah, you're starting to calculate. I have 10 characters. They're all 120. How many levels? How many hours of my life? And you start to spiral. <laughs> yeah, it's like a multi-box, eight birds at some, most of the time, seven or eight generally. So that's a lot of power gone into leveling them all, gearing them to a point where they won't just die straight away. And, yeah. you know, getting flying and it's a lot of work gets overwhelming and i think while i love mythic plus i think in shadowlands i won't do all of the extra things that i normally do i would just like to have an easy life do any dailies that i need to and focus on running some mythic plus dungeons and i'll be happy with that i think yeah yeah i think mythic for me and running that new tower what's it what's it called the tower of something yeah, the tower. I can't remember its name either. I think it's like a solo player progression tower. Yeah, kind of like great. the mage tower yeah. that they had in Legion, which was fun for a little while. It wasn't so fun to keep trying to do it on all characters because some were harder than others. But, you know, it does look fun. There's lots of um, new data mining just gone up. There's so much information, though. It's kind of hard to pick out what you want to really look at yeah yeah it's just like a randomized dungeon kind of like diablo in a way but they have like different modifiers and you climb higher and higher it's kind of interesting um how they added uh, it's like a fresh content like a new thing i like stuff yeah. like that where you're climbing and i like solo progression a lot too especially when you have raids already and high mythic keys where you need a group for this one you could just do solo which i think a lot of people play world of warcraft solo as well yeah, I know quite a few of my friends have given up on the whole guild life and they <laughs> the just guild plug life. in. <laughs> yeah, the Throw guild up life. Gangster. Yeah. I'm fed up of everyone, <laughs> you know. Let me out of here. I just want to be on my own. I did it for a while. I quit my guild. I stopped playing with people. I just wanted to, you know, do my own kind of thing. I pugged a lot of Mythic Plus. I got a really high score on Raider IO. And yeah. I was like, okay, I feel successful now. I'm going to stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, some new mounts. Mounts. Sorry. Let me see. Let me see. I think I have the link that you posted here. Yeah, there are so many new mounts. Um, some wow. really uh, Ar Ardenwald mounts. Stag. There's some, there's some good models here. The Hound, oh, we already have a mount, very similar to that, just a different color. The Jailer Hound or whatever? Yeah, but the horse, I think there was one similar in Legion. I think it might have been a rare drop or something, but we have a mount similar to this, just not as fancified. They added a bat mount, so yikes. Yes, why wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> it makes me feel sad because I bought the other bat mount from the shop like a ridiculous amount of years ago, the horde bat kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, and now they've kind of added it in the game. They have a bit of an obsession with bats right now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even in Diablo, we got our little bat pet. Yeah. For the seasonal but as theme. well, the two-headed one, I don't know its name, but Maldraxxus Flyer. That's very Legion-esque. There was a two-headed mount we got in Legion. No, not Legion. Raynor, even? I think I bought the two-headed dragon mount, or whatever it's called. Yeah. The Iron Reaver thing. Yeah, and it has the two heads, and I think it's red and yellow, maybe. But it's oh kind of like they reskinned that a little bit. But it does look cool. I really like the moth. I hate moths in real life, but the moth mount <laughs> <laughs> there's some you interesting ones <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just fly around the light just, yeah, just <laughs> rp as a moth all the time yeah the winged lion that was i think a recruit a friend mount i want to say the kind of lion looking thing yeah they're pretty and i think they, these are based off of what you choose um, so you have the different things that you're going to choose, the factions and things. So um, I think you choose one side to join. 
So it'd be interesting if these mounts were actually only tied to those. I'm not sure if they are, but I'm thinking they might be because it did say about being from different factions. So yeah, like you align yourself with something, right? And then yeah, maybe the you have the covenant, and then you only have access to those, maybe. And then maybe you yeah, can switch so it later much, or something. Yeah, there'd be a chance to like your alts and things you could maybe choose a different one with an all and you know collect them all if they're going to work it that way i don't <laughs> you know need the red and blue gonna... version you got to catch yeah, them all i need them all <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay i see you world of warcraft making this level alts exactly they are though you know yeah. that's what they're gonna do to us there's a lot of spells and covenant spells and things but it's so detailed um a lot of it does look good. I'm interested in a lot of the things for Druid, um, especially. Um, it's kind of like they're taking it back a bit, which is nice. It's going to go more Druid-like because I stopped playing Druid. I don't know. Their changes got a bit too much for me, and it didn't feel like my Druid did, you know, from BC and into Wrath and things. They yeah. totally changed it at the end of Wrath. So for me, it's nice to see it kind of going back to its roots i guess the tree roots <laughs> <laughs> i see what you did there <laughs> yeah very cheesy <laughs> but the law looks amazing i'm i'm excited for the story most because sylvanas she's my favorite mm, she always same. will be whether i'm alliance or horde she will always be number one and obviously she pierced the veil into the shadowlands and i'm excited to see where it's where it's gonna go with the storyline yeah it's it seemed like in BFA, there was like no direction for her. Yeah, that much. it was kind of stale. Um, yeah. So um, hopefully it changes in Shadowlands. Yeah, hopefully. But yeah, they've got a lot going on as well recently. Um, <laughs> it's like, wow, every day there's something new happening. Um, they've got the XP buff that was supposed to end, but they've extended it. Yes. Um, yeah, 100% XP um with the what is it called the uh, time walking event uh, and rested xp and the new xp buff i was getting and like a Ellie. level yeah i think a level and a level and a half each dungeon yeah uh, from like, it's amazing yeah so like i went from like 110 to like 111 and a half with like one dungeon it's pretty crazy yeah, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I love when they put buffs, because we get it for the anniversary, but it's a kind of smaller buff for the anniversary, and you can always guarantee that somewhere in the anniversary, the Dark Moon Fair is going to be up. So that also gives you the extra buff. I think it's 10%. You can buy a hat. You can sit on the mm -hmm. ride. You can go on the roller coaster now, because they added that in, which is pretty cool. So... If the XP buffs up, your heirlooms, you're rested. If the Darkman Fair is happening, if time walking is happening, it's a really amazing time <laughs> to be leveling. Yeah, you yeah. just catapult all your alts before the expansion. It's great. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But that was supposed to end on 420. Yeah, 420. I, I don't yeah. know why, but we'll take it. Yeah, we'll take that. But they extended it. So they said until the pre-patch. So people have kind of tried to figure out when the pre-patch is going to be you can sort of estimate like we do with the ptr for diablo you can estimate when this is going to be because the legendary cloak is a weekly thing you upgrade it weekly so they know the max level of the cloak they know how many more weeks <laughs> that's going to be going on for and then you can kind of you know they're not just going to at the end of the cloak line, they're not just going to go, okay, that's it. We're going straight into the pre-patch. They're going to let people use their upgraded clothes, trying to push the last few mythic bosses in the raid and things. So going off of the cloak and things, that should be maybe Deadlands. Okay. Sometime, you know, maybe around there, some sometime around there, hopefully. But it's when, definitely when, uh, when is the date again? Um... That they that it might come out, according oh, so to acor according to all this. They haven't got a fixed date, mm -hmm. but it should possibly be September October. September October. I, I think the cloak finishes somewhere in August. Okay. So with the alpha just starting now, 
Um, well, see, it's easy to gauge when beta comes, but it's probably late September, early October, I think people were saying, from okay. what I was reading anyway. This we should WoW Classic other, came up yeah. yeah, late in the year, I think. So maybe they like this like fall release. I think the, the latest we had was December, obviously. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that was the very first. It wasn't vanilla in December, actually. I can't yeah, I remember. think so. But something's been in December, October, November. <laughs> um, I think ICC was very late. Uh, um, ICC, Wrath even was very late. So, yeah. Um, but hopefully, pretty soon. -ish. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I get into alpha, then I'll be okay. I guess I kind of want to yeah. check out all the changes myself and everything. Yeah, exactly. It'd be amazing. I'm hoping all my accounts get in. You're uh, like, yeah, <laughs> please. <laughs> well, that's what happened with the beta for BFA. I got it on, I think, two, no, three of my accounts in the end I had beta on. So Dang. it's just sad I can't give someone one of my logins to go and play. but Because you have yeah. so many, yeah. Yeah. Multi-boxing lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> we got a rep buff as well to go along with your xp buff yeah you told me that earlier i was shocked about that because i feel like they never really give us too many rep buffs no it's normally very rare but i think they're doing it because they're taking away the requirements for allied races i think aren't they um yes yeah um i've been wanting to unlock a few allied races but it's so mm -hmm. daunting that it turns me off as like a casual wow player you know but um, apparently you just need the achievements in Shadowlands. You don't need to have the reputation bonuses to go alongside it. Oh, that's really good. That's so, a good change. Yeah, for me, I'm like, great, I can unlock a bunch of just doing, like, you probably just do the main campaign, the, you know, the story and all that stuff, and then you unlock it. So that's way cooler for a casual like me. I mean, I play well, a lot of, I play a lot of WoW, but, mm -hmm. oh, what's up? Oh, if you needed your flying in BFA, now would be the time to do it as well with the rep buff. Um, mm. Obviously, for the Pathfinder, you're going to have to have the reps. And it is extended to Nash, the Tar Rep, and Mechagon and things. The buff is giving you 100% there as well. So it's a good time to go and even just do the wild quests every day. You'd be able to unlock your flying really quickly. It's very boring, but <laughs> <laughs> with the rep buff, it's not as bad as it would be. I haven't unlocked flying ever. Like, not in uh, Warlords of Draenor, Legion, BFA. And not once. So, uh, it always is like, by the time it comes out, I guess I usually kind of fall out by then. Yeah. Yeah, I, I usually play like a 100 it. to 200 hours, but it's probably nothing to like an MMO. But yeah, I usually play like a couple hundred hours. I got mine, I think, very, very quickly. I was one of the first to have flying on my EU account. Um, I think it was 11 days or something. But I was staying up at night. I was grinding all the bosses, um, <laughs> all of the rares, everything that I could possibly do. And it was horrible. And it made me never want to do it again. And then, of course, I decided to start playing NA again. And yeah. I was like, okay, I'm just going to bang it out as much as I can get it done because... I don't want to ever have to do this again, but there I am doing it for a second time. I think they should get rid of it. I hate this new way. I prefer, you know, buying it. Make it a million gold or something, you know, if you don't want to do the rep. Yeah. People can have that gold. It would be good for their business too, let's face it. People just buy tokens, but yeah, it's hard and it's not very fun either. I hate how they... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Whole, that's why I never do it. I'm like, eh. By the time it unlocks that you can't even do it, I'm already usually falling out. Hopefully I stay longer with Shadowlands, but never know. Maybe. Yeah. Um, so we're at the 49 minute mark. We could cover a few gaming topics, maybe. Um, we'll keep everybody too long. I think yeah. we have um, what's first on the gaming news. So we have the thing about Amazon's game, Amazon Twitch. I new thought. World, right? Yeah, New World. Um, the game, I saw it a while ago. Uh, it looks amazing. It's a little like Conan, but not at the same time. Like an like open world survival game, kind of? Survival game, yeah. yeah. And uh, 
I watched the trailer, it looks really cool. Like the graphics are nice, um, the gameplay looks really nice, but they've annoyed a lot of people, sadly. Uh oh. Um, Don't do yeah. that on the internet. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of hate. Abort, because... abort. <laughs> They were supposed to launch in May, and they were going to do their beta. I think it was a closed beta in April. And because of, obviously, the world is a bit chaotic right now, mm -hmm. I've said that they are now starting the beta in July, and the planned release is now August the 25th. But people are angry because if you were due to launch in May with the beta in April, why are you now saying August? Because that's a big amount of time. Yeah, I can and see that. Announced it recently that they were changing the date as well. So they should have already been in the beta and you know, the launch was really soon and things. So they've upset people. But... Like the game should be done. Like the betas nowadays are just like bug testing or stress testing. Anyway. It should be completed. So I think that's why they're kind of angry. And with them saying, you know, the beta is going to be July now. I think they, it's a closed beta. I think you have to have pre-ordered maybe to get into the beta. So I think oh, what wow. they is let the people play the beta, have fun, delay the actual launch, fair enough, but at least give them a little something. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice to maybe some early access or I don't know. They can just do something above and beyond. When... Yeah, they got a lot of sad, sad, angry people. <laughs> <laughs> All um, those survival yeah. game guys, man. They're yeah, not happy. they're not trying to survive this and they want <laughs> yeah. to take their mind off of it. And yeah. you go and... True, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm having uh, the world <laughs> um, in the state that it's in, it's nice to have games to keep us busy, so... Yeah, and they've been like, no, we're not doing it. We're pushing it. So it is kind of weird because uh, I have a lot of game developers that watch my stream, and uh, I'm in contact with a few. And everyone I've talked to is just easily to transition from home. Like they just take their work home. Like, yeah. like it's. I guess it's easy to work on games from home. So it's weird to see that they had a crazy big pushback, but yeah, especially by Amazon. Yeah don't normally put their name on something and it you know cause anger <laughs> well sometimes yes they do cause a lot of anger but you know it's amazon's new world so yeah it's a bit weird a big company like them you know stopping the thing when their other companies are still all you know going at full capacity it is kind of weird to see that a game of all things they can't manage to get out on time yeah well, hopefully like, it turns around because yikes. Yeah. It's not good right now. No. And then I read, we read the thing about the switches all being, we've been talking about it, the switches being a crazy price on Amazon, <laughs> coincidentally. Yeah. yeah they yeah. shut down the factory pretty early on, I believe. And it caused the price to skyrocket. Like everyone's been selling their switches for two, three times the price lately. Yeah, exactly. There's a reason that these prices have been bumped up, actually, and I discovered it this morning. Um, someone created a Discord bot called BirdBot, and basically what it does is it goes to Amazon, eBay, Best Buy, Walmart, other websites, and as soon as it sees that they have stock of switches, it checks them out for people automatically oh, and wow. then the that are doing that are the ones that are you know selling them on ebay and amazon These oh wow it's like some kind of I wow auctioneer snipe tool or something what is it called yeah exactly. <laughs> <What> the <heck? laughs> guy that made it was saying he didn't make it to be used for this but it just so happens that that's now what people have been using it for so you know, they're pumping out. They've said, Nintendo have said that they're making 22 million switches. Wow. So I'm just hoping that this bird bot. 22 million. How <laughs> deep are the pockets of bird bot, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 22 so million. So all these people are using this to check it out. So I hope when they make the 22 million and get them out there, I think they said June would be when the stocks would replenish. 
I hope that people that are using something like this actually end up checking out a hell of a lot and you know finding themselves in a bit of a pickle yeah because how many now are in stock and they've accidentally bought overbought they better unload them now for cheaper huh exactly (laughs) so it kind of i hope it happens and you know they're left twiddling their thumbs and feeling bad for themselves because i think it's disgusting to do that you know there could be a child somewhere you know the you know, it's really bored. They're stuck in doors. Parent wants to get some, and they're conning space. Yeah, like um, it's pretty messed up during the time that we're living in, and people are not being able to play Animal Crossing. Some kid out there or whatever, just because people are trying to control the market. It's pretty yeah. shitty. It's oh. shitty. Yeah. yeah. What the hell? I was dead sorry for it. Um, even though it's not them doing it, they have apologized that it's happening to people. And they're trying to rectify it. So, yeah, they're a good company. I'm really sorry, but most of our supplies of the switches are manufactured in China. There was nothing we could do, um, obviously. Um, So, yeah, they're making up for it now. Yeah, so, yeah, the factory was in China. And when they shut it down immediately, I thought it was kind of weird. I didn't realize the factory was in China. So they moved the factory to somewhere else so they can continue to produce them. So they already got, looks like they already got their operation up and running. So that's nice. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, they're a good company, though. Um, they know when they need to do something, unlike other companies. But, you know, they're, they're making up for it. 22 million is a hell of a lot to be making. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. They probably just can see the demand and they're like, okay, we need to just go yeah, crazy. Yeah, we'll need Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think this episode has been amazing having you on. Have you had fun today? Yeah, I was nervous, yeah. but You're I'm in, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll be all for the Blood Heart Podcast. We'll be back next week. Wait, where can they find you, Rekka? Do you, um, you, do you want to share your Twitter with the world? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's xrekkax on Twitter or Rekka on Twitch. Uh, I'm not anywhere else because I hide a lot of the time. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, in, in, the, in the shadows, just waiting. <laughs> in the shadows, lurking. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I get, I'm at Bloodshed. You can find me everywhere. Bloodshed. Yeah. B-L-U-D-D-S-H-E-D. Um, we should have these out once a week. And like I said, we'll try to stay on topic and cover as most as we can. But I do want it to feel natural. I think the episode today was really good, if I do say yeah. so. I think we're, I think we're gonna get our get our feet in a few more episodes, and everything should be swell. The first one is the always first the one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Taking a <laughs> taking a dipping a toe or jumping in the pool, like just getting started, is the most is the hardest part. I noticed as making content. So we did it. We completed episode one of the new era. 